of things. You exactly. know, like you're trying to solve crime, you're trying to solve poverty, you're trying to solve all these things. But if we don't know the foundational mm -hmm. things of who we are, where we come from, you know, our history and, and you know, and our, and, and our purpose, then exactly. it's hard to fix those other things. In the assault that's on our community when it comes to our history. Yes. And so, um, time is of the essence. Yeah, and, are... and, and who better to speak on that exactly. than Dr. Umar? So, I want to welcome Dr. Umar. Glad to be here. Yes. Peace and Pan Africanism. Uh, listen, it, before, I, before um, you became popular uh, with The Breakfast Club, which yes, is sir. Also our sister station, you know, I, I've had the privilege to have you on just being, you know, just feeling like I wanted to create a little bit of like, Shock. Yes, sir. I've always been about that. Yes, you know sir. Yes, sir. And, you know, having you on my show years ago, and then to see now, you know, what you've been able to just do for the culture. Yes, sir. I yes. I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but I would like to hear, you know, you, you speak on it, is that um, although you, you know, you're, you're speaking on educating us and to me empowering us as black people, there's still some of us that kind of like, you know, that, uh, th that throw shade. Yes, sir. You know, yes, what, sir. what do you say to that? Is that part of the problem in itself or like, I would know? probably argue that it's part of the process. Okay. There's always going to be a detractors. There's always going to be the naysayers. There's always going to be those who always look to, uh, undermine what the message is the cynic is always there right. and i think the cynic exists in every culture every institution every movement so why should i be any different the bird can't fly without resistance from the wind that is correct all right so let's start out the gate with this um this recent um i don't know if it's a bill or mm -hmm. whatever the scientist is doing to try to uh mm -hmm. bury our, our our black history what, what do you say to that i'm not surprised i think it's an insult I think it is disingenuous. I think it is an outright lie to put into the curriculum within the state of Florida that slavery benefited African people because we learn some beneficial skills. Obviously, Governor DeSantis doesn't know much about African history because one of the reasons the Europeans chose to enslave Africans is because we already had the skills. Yes. Many of the crops that were grown in America were native to Africa. In fact, we brought crops with us. And it was particularly certain tribes that were selected during the slave trade because we were already expert in growing cotton you know, tobacco and things of that nature. So we didn't learn any new skills. If anything, we taught white people skills. Wow. I mean, straight up. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, and sir. how to dress. Yes, sir. how to bathe. <laughs> yes, sir. Because I feel like, uh, in general, when people use emojis with me, they always seem to want to put a shade lighter than they really are. Yes, sir. And so in, in my thing, I'm like, no, I'd rather put a shade the fee complexion within our community to feel like they are as important and as valued as every other complexion. No, I agree with that. And thank you so much for touching on that subject. You know, you, you talk a lot about, you know, economics as really being the key. Um, at, at, from when you first started talking about economics and educating people based on, like, how economics is used so strongly to control us and yes, stuff like yes. that. Yes, yes. To this point now, do you see changes? Do you see people catching on? Or do you see, like, damn, every time I push forward, the system has something to push it right back or close? I do see change. I do see a lot more initiatives now to organize the black dollar. But I'm still not seeing enough power be directed towards creating the institutions that we really need, like the banks, like the schools, mm -hmm. like the hospitals, like the supermarkets, like the manufacturing sector or the distribution networks. I see a lot of uh, new black businesses. I think a lot of. I'm proud of them brothers and sisters, but I'm a little disappointed because not one of them has given us a major institution. Wow. And they have clearly invested into other things like fashion. Yes, yes, and other yes. Things, but not Give us point. the institutions. Yeah, great point. Um, something that I saw, and I don't know if it got on your radar yet, so there's the basketball player out of um, Boston. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think his name was Brown. Jalen Brown. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you see what he had to say? I didn't. 
but everybody been texting me all day, so I got to see what he said. But from what I heard, yes, yes. Uh, he allegedly is going to use this new big contract he just got yes. to try to lay a foundation to build some black Wall Streets in the country. He did say that, starting with Boston, and I, and I thought that was just so amazing and so and so powerful. So you know, he's getting the attention for the fact that he has the largest NBA contract. Uh, to date, yes, and you know, for him to say that in, in, in at that moment of his press conference, I thought was so heavy. And he oh yes, unapologetically. Yes, black. yes, and Jalen Brown is one of those unapologetically African athletes. You know, he's spoken up. You know, he's not one of the go along to get alongs. He has a lot more. Uh, power and masculinity um, in his voice and in his statements. But I also want to say this. I think that the genesis of the black Wall Street exists in a lot of our cities. Even if you look in Miami, mm -hmm. you have enough black businesses that if they came together and organized mm -hmm. under a single banner, that could be the beginning of a black Wall Street. I think we overlook every day potential black Wall Streets around the country because they're not working in unison. They're not coming together. If you got a barbershop, I got the restaurant, she got the beauty salon, another brother changing tires, somebody else selling clothing. Why don't we come up with a customer discount card where if you buy at any one of us, you get a discount from any of the others of us. Right. I don't think black businesses are organizing enough with each other to attract the black dollar. We want the black dollar, but are we organizing enough to attract it in because I should automatically be organizing and pushing every other black business in my vicinity. And the incentives that are offered to my customers should also be supporting all the other businesses around me. Black businesses have to stop operating like an island. Yeah, that's correct. Because honestly, if you if you if you really think about it too, sometimes you know our people we over scrutinize yes. black businesses. Yes. And I think we have to overcome that because there's no black power without the black dollar. There's no black power without the black dollar. And the one weakness of African people, when you compare us to any other community, we do not weaponize our money for our political agenda. Yeah. We never use our money. Yeah. We don't finance candidates. We don't build institutions. Even when you look at the design. Why economy on an annual basis is unacceptable. Yeah, that's a fact on that. Um, do you do you see the major pathways is we have not politicize the consciousness of the youth enough you understand they're out there they're trying to find their way some of them are constructive a lot of them are destructive but i think they all can benefit from a political education they have not been politicized or re-africanized for me i think we spend too much time trying to change the actions in 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 intellect of adult black people. I think we need to spend more time working on the youth, 25 and under. That's the group that should get most of our attention. But we keep on trying to rehabilitate 40 year olds and rehabilitate 50 year olds. Don't get me wrong, you never throw you nobody know, away. Up, but but you know. the babies are the future. Yeah. Focus on them and we've been ignoring them. That's I agree with that for sure. Um, one thing I wanted to kind of like have you debunk mm -hmm. um, because it's a conversation that I've been having uh, with others when they talk about the word and, and we've heard this over and over mm -hmm. and over and over again black on black crime mm -hmm. so you know i'm no expert mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know but mm -hmm. my common knowledge my phd in common sense allows me to know that you're going to kill what's around you mm -hmm. you know what's mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. vicinity mm -hmm. so as much as they try to make black on black crime a thing mm -hmm. it's no different than white on white crime true and asian on asian crime true based on your vicinity true what, what's your take on that i agree with that i do think that it can be exaggerated a bit much because all crime sociologically takes place within one's environment and right. most environments are culturally homogenous with that being said, though, I think the small caveat that we would have to make on that topic is that black men currently are the only men who are their own leading cause of death. And so I think that's where it does deserve a little bit of attention, because if you're black and you die from an unnatural cause as a black male, it's more likely to be another black man. And so we do have to target that. But I think, though, when we talk about black on black fratricide and genocide, we are not 
putting enough emphasis on education and the role that miseducation plays. And by education, I'm also including the lack of industrial building trades in the high schools to give our young men an opportunity at a career path other than the university. Because if we're going to be honest about the university, and of course I got my six university degrees, but I went to college at a time where it was still lucrative to go to college. Right Right. now, if you're getting a college degree and you're African American, you're not likely to get employed, but yet you owe 50, 80, $100,000 on student loans that you may not be able to pay back. So I think the black community needs to fight to get the building trades put back into the high schools, the the, um, electric, the plumbing, the HVAC, the roofing, the welding, the auto mechanic, put that stuff back so these boys can stop ski massing and selling dope out here on these streets. If they had the skills to pay the bills, there would be a lot less crime. So we got to fight on the education side. And then on the economic side, there's not enough jobs. There's absolutely Absolutely not enough jobs. And black youth unemployment is worse than black adult unemployment. So how are you going to really talk about Talk about addressing violence in the inner city, and you're not talking about addressing schools or employment. That's hypocritical. Man, listen, you know, I, I say this to you every time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Forever. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, I could do a five hour podcast with you right now, but I know you're here for an amazing event, um, you know, and um, I just want to offer more opportunity to talk about, mm-hmm. you know, the event and. and and uh, what you'll be touching on at the yes, event, what people could be looking forward to. Yes, sir. Uh, well, as the good sister said, uh, with the direct descendants of Africans enslaved in America, it's going to be a day of celebration. We got to talk about reparations because we are entitled to that. And we can't sit by and let so much American money, our tax dollars, go to Ukrainians and Afghanis and migrants who have never suffered what we suffered, nor pay into the economic system the way in which we pay into it. It's an insult to black people to watch President Biden and the U.S. Congress authorize funds for people who have never contributed to this country, while those who laid the foundation for America. HD evaluation, bring that autism evaluation, bring that reading disability evaluation. I don't get to Miami that often. It's been about two years since my last visit, yeah. so I'm really excited to see my brothers and sisters tomorrow. And we're excited as well, and, and thank you for being so consistent in, in your works. And yes, sir. You yes, do. sir. Yes, sir. That's one thing I say, you never shift off of no, like, sir. You know, no, your sir. foundation and in terms of like schooling and, and, and educating people on, on their children and stuff like that. Uh, to me, you could take so many stances and have so many different platforms and yes, sir. things but you always no, stay sir. solid on no, that. No, sir. Stay consistent. That's what's up, man. Stay we consistent. appreciate you, brother. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. You know I mean? Yes, sir. Uh, any last words, Queen? Um, I'm just excited uh, for everything that's to come uh, and I want to thank Dr. Umar Johnson for coming here. We welcome you to Miami uh, and we want all the people to come out to have a good time, to learn, ask questions and to uh, come together. We're all brothers and sisters and we are all Africans and so uh, spread love, spread joy, and have a good time tomorrow. All right, give them the information real quick for tomorrow. So for tomorrow, it is at uh, Mishkan Tahila, a local church, uh, 2820 Northwest 167 Terrace in Miami Gardens, Florida, 33056. All right, what time frame? From 12 to 6 p.m. All right.